of damage here as we head into match number three. Our third match of the day, game number two, here in featuring PSO and Cerberus. Minions have spawned. Very excited to see what PSO has to bring. Especially with Jur on this Lee Sin though, it's kind of the same properties um, as the Fiora where you can be proactive, but the, the drawback is that you don't really get the skill into the late game. It's not a luxury that Lee Sin get to enjoy. So it demands a lot of that attention to detail uh, for the first few minutes up to you contest that objective. But for CES, there are a lot of neutralizing factors. Morgana being one of it, you have Duckby on the set. Just so much uh, more insurance to control these fights compared to game number one. All right, Duckby gets hit there. Immediately he pops up the face breaker. And Drew like Tobu just constantly putting in that pressure onto CES. Um, game one was playing on that Galio, but now we have the Lawless concept still the same. That dredge line into a binding is going to spell a lot of problem. He just hit level two just in time right to go for that full combo onto Genza. First blood comes right through for Dewa. Easily done. Duck B wants something in return. He has to ignite flashes with that haymaker for the second kill. But Tobu would trade back PSO with two kills down bot. Two for one. Duck B is a Casualty here in this turn. Early on, Cerberus. use that power spike to punish CS, and it happened again in this game. And even though CS got, got a trade, it doesn't really matter too much, right? Because Tobu was able to get an exchange back. Do run forward, face Baker into a binding, and they were most likely he's gonna go down, but he's able to walk away with a little of health. And Tobu, uh -oh. oh boy, has to ignite. He brings his whole family with him. And Duck B gets punished once more. Is it just me, Husky, or is the fact that PSO right now? is operating like how they should have. They they just know that they are able to get some of the tempo advantages over Cerberus, and if they're able to get these tempos early, it's going to be the end. Uh-oh, Death Charge, just to force BMM away. There's never going to be an opportunity to finish off Jero. And, and I do agree, I think PSO are doing the exact modus operandi, right? They understand that they need to play fast. CS has a neutralizer, but that also means that this lane is not going to be active unless you make a misstep. PSO has a draft that allows them to make those active moves. We saw how Jero, uh, how Jero, how Tecmo 30, they are just actively supporting the Dragon Lane because they understand that if Deva gets a hit, it's going to be so hard for CS to play into him. Final Spark barely misses! And Genza, he will gladly exchange his life. Oh, nicely done there. Genza and Dewa, both of them now getting some trades off. We're going to be seeing a beautiful Dragon's Rage right into a Sonic Wave Resonating Strike. Oh, we don't see a follow-up here. Tobu could be in a bit of trouble there. There goes Dragon's Breath onto him by Meliodas. Tobu, most likely will be able to get away with that dredge line. And Tuff right on time. Y1 flashes with a hook shot and actually connects. And Tuff now finds himself in a horrible spot. Pop the Dominus, locked down with the ultimatum, set the blaze. Two kills for CES. Cerberus now coming back in. Oh, but here comes PSO, Jill, right now. So I well don't done. know about you, Husky, but it no seems fair that fight the for these two teams. PSO hovering around that Rift Herald area, but I don't think Tufts wants to be a part of this, though. Even though with the dominance, unless Joe can get some magic happen, Y1 tanking up with the adaptive shoe. As CS slowly whittles down the Rift Herald, uh -oh. Death Charge fuels onto BMM. Final spot comes right to BMM. He actually death marks onto Dewa to try and find a kill. But the death mark does not have enough damage. BMM goes down. All right, seems that Shelly's going to make an appearance over the mid side, over to the bottom side, though. It is going to be the Garrett's in tech with just spinning to win right into the Dragon Dive. And they will finish off Tobu, just drop all the spells on him. Allowing Shelly to get the charge off mid tier one down for PSO. But Tech Maturity was able to trade the bot tier one back. So a decent exchange. PSO, despite not being the one in the lead in terms of net worth, they definitely are keeping up with CES. However, CES now is now working on that Dragon Flash Wall by Tech Maturity. He has the execution chance, uh -oh. but the Gargoyle Stone play protects Duck B, and it opens up the Dragon for PSO to steal it away. Very nicely done there for the side of PSO, being able to push out uh, Duck B from that situation, forcing him to use the Gargoyle Stone play. It was definitely a very big brain move from the side of uh, PSO to actually be wary of the fact that Cerberus is going to at being incredibly the active, they're having Tobu running around the map and making sure that no one gets left on an island and that is severely impeding BMM's ability to go for those solo pickups. 
Impeding is going to be the case here for the solo lane pickups, and I do agree. PSO right now going up for the beautiful Death Charge. Death Charge on the Duck B, pulls two back. Dragon flying in. Meliodas turns huge. The Duck B tries to stay alive, and he will. With the Haymaker, BMM wants to find a kill, gets exhausted, locked down, binder, and kill. Y1 though will show up with the ultimatum, and Drill will be the exchange. Tobu also goes down. Tagmar Turgy is third on the board, but you gotta watch out for Dewa though. They turn around with the O. The Dimash Justice for the kill, but the Soul Shackle and the Flash from Genza will secure one exchange as Genza drops to the turret. Both teams trade blows. Whoa, both teams trade blows. Who came out the worst of it all? Dewa and Tas will be able to walk away from that, but it seems that 3 for 3, if I'm not. 3 for 2, if I'm not mistaken, in favor of PSO. Not exactly the very best way for PSO, excuse me, not the very best way for CS to actually try to fight that way. But we do see Tobu as well as other members of PSO were very wise to actually try to fight that out as much as they could. Members of Cerberus right now, they were very effective in pulling the trigger, but I guess the biggest determining factor was the fact that BMM got exhausted and was in the middle of it without much follow-up here. And that was the hugest issue moving forward for the side of Cerberus. But we're going to see more fights here. CS, they need to get these guys out, but why one he can't even move. Duck me trying his best to protect him and here with the Triumph. Stays alive for a bit longer. CS. Uh -oh. They really want to get some revenge. Doug B putting himself forward. He is a bait. Black Shield buying some time. Uh -oh. The fighting connects again, and Dewa can do no wrong. You do not defy the God. With the counter attack of their own, and I feel that PSO are actually winning this out. But I want to see PSO a little, be, a little bit more proactive for these objectives here because the objectives are what wins the long term game. What they need is towers for sure. And Meliodas is caught up in the open. No man's land for you, my friend. Tobu brought back into a binding, but where's the follow-up? Again, when the god is alive, you do not mess around, and PSO have found two kills. Rift Herald dropped down mid, PSO turns to the dragon. All right, so looking at it here, we do see that it is going to be the dragon contest here for the side of PSO. Cerberus right now comes back up. This could be an opportunity for them. And they want BMM, they want Dewa. BMM goes for the kill. Flash Soul Shackle, Genza. He's buying good space. Dewa is the target, and BMM is determined to get him out of the fight, and he will do so, but the dragon's still in danger. Y1 gets the ultimatum, no steal! And he sacrifices his life, dropped by the staggering blow, oh! and Tuss will follow him to the ends of the world. Double for the Renekton, and PSO comes out on top. I don't know about you, but heck yeah, was that one fight for PSO. That was just amazing. The fact that Genza was in the middle of everybody hit the Soul Shackles onto five immediately made PSO. Like, it was just like a flower blooming. You saw everybody scatter. for PSO. But they still have to be careful of these bindings though. It one good binding and servers can easily turn uh -oh. things around. Why one? Don't really want to be there though. Does have the hook shot. Cast away just in time. Oh, the Max Sonic Wave. Why one in danger? Knocked up with a death shot. A kick into a follow-up. Oh, Jero, you are so good. A gymnast and an acrobat at heart. PSO looking for another fight. Tau separating BMM. Look at him, he's looking for a target. But there's the Garen. There's all the target. And then the binding. And the final spark from downtown. Dewa doing so much work. But Kenza, he finds the triple. The soul shackle of the game. Kenza wants to be the savior. Can Dewa get away? No, he cannot. CES finds a quad for Kenza. And a an nace. Wow. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. 20 seconds to actually um, digest all of that. Now, what just happened for PSO was very unfortunate. They took the fight and I felt that Genza was in the middle of everybody Around being able to get the soul shack. Have, you know, the Leandris, the, the Ludens, you can't uh -oh. really stay in that pool for too long. These, this, you know, extended fight is only going to benefit CES. Tekma Turgy knows that he is gone. He's going to try and cut one more wave, or at least buy a bit of time. Stone play also used, and as long as they can wait out this Baron buff and minimize the losses, PSO will be happy with the results. Oh, the chase to end all chases here. Meliodas is being chased out. The Camille coming up very closely. Y1 is going to be intercepting here, right to the technical sweep, gets the assist. And PSO, they would love to get something done, but Cerberus knows that PSO are looking for an opening and they're not giving any of it. 40 seconds without a Garen. This is going to be crunch time for CS. Can they find something? Jero, what tries to go for Dunkby gets brought right back into a, a face breaker. They want to finish off Dunkby, but he does have the stone play and BMM. Oh, he's looking for blood. 
The binding doesn't land and Tuss is gone. CES looking for game number three. And PSO put up heck of a fight, but Cerberus are going for the jugular. PSO needs to hang on for 15 more seconds. Y1 doesn't want to give them the time. BMN goes in with the death mark. Pull right back. Not close enough into the fountain. The Cerberus, they are split in terms of focus. But the minions will do the work. And Cerberus are not down, not out. We're hitting the distance to game three.